All right, so reaction mechanisms. Uh, were we able to figure out the difference between an intermediate um, and a catalyst? Um, and then also uh, the overall reaction, number of steps. All right, so uh, hydrogen peroxide is a common ho ho household medication used as an antiseptic to clean minor cuts and wounds. Uh, when applied to a cut, you can see small bubbles of oxygen produced as the hydrogen peroxide decomposes. All right, so here's our equation. So 2H2O2 plus, or yields H2O plus O2. On its own, hydrogen peroxide decomposes very slowly, but an enzyme called catalase in your blood can speed up the decomposition. So uh, there are many other substances which act as a catalyst, so an enzyme specifically one in your body. One such catalyst is hydrobromic acid, HBr. In the presence of HBr, a two-step reaction mechanism takes place. All right, so in step one, you can see we have HBr plus H2O2 yields Br2 and two H2Os. Then the Br2 that's produced reacts with H2O2 to produce HBr and O2. Write the overall reaction. So what we do is we actually cross out, or better yet, this might even be a better, excuse me, a better idea, is just box them because then you can still see them. So rather than me having to erase. So in this first one, we have HBr as a reactant and a product. And so um, it does not show up in the overall reaction. We have Br2 being produced as a product and then used up as a reactant. So that also does not show up in the overall reaction. So I have two H2O2s on the left-hand side. I have two H2Os and one O2, which notice it is a balanced equation. The mechanism is not valid if you don't get a balanced equation at the end here. So that's one of the checks, remember, we did when we learned the mechanism. An intermediate is a substance that's produced in one step and then used up again. So as a product in one step and then as a reactant in a later step. And as we saw, Br2 is the um, intermediate in this one because it's produced in the first step and then used up as a reactant in the second step. So then how do you tell the difference between that and a catalyst? Well, the catalyst here is HBr. So HBr is added in the beginning as a reactant, and then it's produced as a product. So once again, it cancels. Homogeneous means it's the same phase. Heterogeneous means a uh, different phase. This, these are all homogeneous. It's all homogeneous because when we look back up here, they're all aqueous. So all of the reactants are aqueous. If they're all gases, then again, it's homogeneous. If they're gases and you add a solid as a catalyst, uh, like they do in your car with a catalytic converter, if you know what that is, that's a solid catalyst, and the gases are the reactants, and so that is a heterogeneous, not the same state of matter. Um, explain how a small amount of catalyst is able to catalyze the decomposition of a large number of hydrogen peroxide molecules. So you add a really small amount and it can produce, or it can um, catalyze the large amount, and the reason is, you add it here and it gets used up in the first step, but then it is produced here. So in the end, you have HBr left over. And so why? And it's because it's not used up. You start with two moles and then at the end, you produce two moles, right? And so then none is used up. So that's why you can have a small amount and then you can it will keep being used throughout the reaction. Write a simple definition of the term reaction mechanism. Um, so a reaction mechanism shows an overall reaction in a series of steps. Next page. All right, so this potential diagram, potential energy diagram shows the original uncatalyzed and then the catalyzed reaction. So we did these energy um, diagrams the very first day when we started this. So this right here is the reactants. Notice they're saying they're adding Br minus. So HBr being a strong acid means, so it's actually the Br minus. So without the catalyst, you can see we have this up here is the activated complex and therefore the activation energy as well. So Ea for activation energy. This though shows, let me change the color. 
this shows the catalyzed path. So there's the first step. So step one in our mechanism from the previous page, and there's step two from the previous page. So notice the difference now in activation energy. All right, so uh, what was the effect of the catalyst on the activation energy? It lowers it. Look how much lower it got. Neither one of them get to the height of this much energy. You don't have to get up there anymore to make this reaction happen. What was the effect of the catalyst on the delta H? Now the delta H is from the reactants. Let me get rid of uh, my mess here. Let me go back. There's the products. So from the reactants to the products is the delta H. This thing is negative, it's exothermic, and nothing was the effect on the overall reaction. Because here were the reactants, here were the products for both the catalyzed and the uncatalyzed reaction. In the catalyzed reaction, which was the rate determining step, uh, what we learned here was it's the slow step, and the slow step is the one with the highest activation energy. So step two in this case is going to be the slow step, it has the, there's the activation energy of step one, the activation energy of step two. A lot going on in this one. They talk about ozone a little bit, but they're just showing the mechanism. So uh, part A, right, the overall reaction. So once again, I'm gonna box them instead of um, crossing them out. So there's our catalyst. CL is added in the beginning and then produced in the end. Uh, and here CLO is our intermediate. Once again, we have two O3s as a reactant, and we have three O2, two and one. Notice that once again, an overall balanced reaction. So a valid mechanism when you get a balanced reaction. Identify the catalyst, CL, is it homogeneous or heterogeneous? Gas, 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 so they're homogeneous. Identify the intermediate, CLO. Recall that chlorine is normally found as the diatomic element, CL2, right? A balanced equation for the reaction collision that could remove the chlorine radical from the atmosphere. So we're talking the chlorine radical is the one causing the ozone issue. So the reaction would be, and they would be gas, gas, and gas. So we'd have to form Cl2, more stable molecule. All right, so now we just have some different reaction mechanisms down here. So essentially the same thing we've done on these previous pages. I'm gonna box them. So we have an intermediate, and this one does not have a catalyst. Although the production of ozone at the ground level starts with the reaction of nitrogen and oxygen gas at high temperatures. So the catalyst in this case is gonna be high temperature. Now, is that really a catalyst? You know, it makes the reaction go faster. It does not really change the activation energy. So, you know, I don't know that I would call it a catalyst, but I would say it increases the rate of the reaction. But definitely the intermediate is NO, and then the overall reaction uh, we have an N2, two O2s, um, and two NO2s. Again, check to see that it's a balance, and it is. I was going to come to the right, so I don't have to go back up. Uh, intermediate. This time we have a catalyst. All right, so we have O3 plus O yields two O2s. Um, the catalyst, NO, intermediate, NO2. Nitrogen dioxide gas can be produced. Now here, struck by UV light. So we would need that reaction to make it happen, but is it a catalyst? Not really a catalyst, although it would speed up the reaction, but not as a catalyst. Um, it would have something to do with activation. Uh, so we have an intermediate again, O, uh, but that's it. No catalyst again. So NO2 plus O2 yields NO plus O3, and notice once again, a balanced reaction. All right, so we have this VOC with a dot, that's called a radical form of VOC, which is um, a volatile organic compound. So VOC yields with UV light, we'll get to this radical with this seven. What that means is, instead of a pair of electrons, it removes an electron. Remember doing these and this stuff. It's taking away one of the electrons. Okay, so we don't have a pair anymore, and they call it a radical also known as a free radical, which you may have heard from it's uh, you know, one of the things they say is you want to reduce free radicals from your body uh, so that it doesn't cause cancer. Um, all right, so let's do the overall reaction. So we have a VOC radical on the reactor. So there's a 
VOC radical as an intermediate. Then we have another intermediate, NO2 being um, produced and then used up. But that looks like it. We don't have, oh, we have an NO. So we have an NO here and then here. So what they're showing here is this is the first step. And then once this is produced, this is the next step. But notice also NO is added and then ends up as a reactant. So overall here we have uh, VOC, a volatile organic compound, plus O2 yields VOC plus um, O3. Now the issue here, as you can see, we're not balanced. So I said that you know this is not a really a um, not really a valid mechanism if the overall reaction does not balance. And I mean you have two O2s on this side and you have O3 on this side, so it makes it kind of tough to say it's balanced. So you know this one's not a very valid mechanism, although we can still answer it. So NO is going to be a catalyst. Why? Because this first reaction happens, the VOCs are in the air. So this is actually step one. So the VOCs are produced, and then step one, and then step two. So you can see in step one, we have NO, NO, so that's the catalyst. We have NO2 and NO2, and that is the um, intermediate. And then really, if we went with that, we would see, so if we ignore this one, so then our reaction is, we don't have that, we don't have this, and you have O2 plus, or O2 yields L3. So once again, not a very good mechanism. They really should have a, um, a three and a two, and then that would balance it. All right, next page. But I didn't like that one. I thought about removing that one. Now this one I didn't like only because it seems like the numbers are off. And it, I didn't make this, and actually I did make it, but I, uh, I got it from somewhere else. And it seems like the formatting got messed up when I printed it for some reason, because my original did not have the numbers in those places. So I apologize, this, this was a bit confusing. Although this is very much like that graphing assignment we did on day one. So if this is confusing to you, go back to day one of kinetics um, and do that graphing assignment. How many collisions or steps are represented? So we have step one to here, reactants to products, which would really be intermediates. Step two, step three, and then step four gets us all the way to the products. So we start with the reactants, we end up with the products. How many steps are there then? There's four. Which step is the fastest? So now the distance from the reactants to the peak is what tells us how fast a reaction is. And it is directly related to how much of a hill you have to climb. So the more of a hill you have to climb, the slower the reaction. It requires more energy. So it's going to travel um, at a slower temperature. So for the fastest step, we're looking for the one with the least activation energy. So if we do step one, step two, step three, and step four, I'm going to say step three is the slow one, or the fast one. Um, the slowest one is going to be the highest activation energy. And without a ruler, we're not measuring, but it looks to me like four has the highest hill or the biggest hill. So that one's going to be the slowest, or the rate determining step. Which number represents the transition state in the first? Now, there's no numbers here. That's what I meant by it. It's a bit confusing. But right here are the transition states. Transition state one, two, three, and four, how, based on how many transition states, also tells you how many steps there are. But remember what the transition state is, it's when the reactants have collided, but they have not yet broken their bonds. So we're not yet breaking bonds. It's this activated complex is the other term for this. Activated complex, AKA, also known as the transition state. So this says, which number represents the transition state formed in the first step? Well, it's going to be right there at the top of the which numbers represent the intermediates? Once again, intermediates. So intermediate is going to be here, intermediate, and intermediate. Is the first step exothermic or endothermic? So now delta H is the distance from the reactants to either the products or the intermediates. So in step one, this is a positive delta H. The intermediates are at a higher energy than the reactants were, equal to the delta H. So this thing is endothermic. What does the one represent? I don't know what to tell you, although if you did follow by what it was there, I would say the reactants. So the reactants are everywhere. 
Draw and label an arrow showing the activation energy of the last step. I already did that. And draw and label the heat of reaction of the last step. So the last step from the intermediates down to the products. This one's a negative delta, so it's exothermic. Now, overall, it would be from the reactants all the way to the products, which I mean, it's kind of hard to tell what the straight line is. It looks like they're almost the same. All right, so fill in step two of the mechanism and decide if each statement below is true or false. All right, so fill in step two of the mechanism. So we have CO plus OH yields eight, uh, CO2 and H. The overall reaction has a CO in it, but it also has an NO in it, but it has an O2. So the O2 has to be here. All right, we may have a intermediate being used up, but let's check. So now we got that. On this side, we should have a CO2. We have an NO. So we have to get rid of an H. We have to get rid of an H. OO, and then we have to get rid of an OH. So we must have added that because they cancel. All right. I think that looks okay. Let me make sure. CO2, H2O. So H is produced. So if we do what I did before, we box there's an intermediate and it's used up. There's an intermediate. And it's used up. Now the OH here is, it's not an inter, oh, I missed it. There it is right there. See what I mean? I knew I thought there was something wrong here. So there it is. There's the OH. So there's not an OH in this one. I, I thought it was something weird. So that's a catalyst. All right. All right. So HOO is an intermediate. I would say that is true. NO is a catalyst. NO is, no, NO is not a catalyst. It's a reactor. Step one has the largest EA, the largest EA. So the largest activation energy is going to be the slowest step. So yeah, I agree with that, that's true. OH is an intermediate. It's added in the beginning and produced at the end. That is not an intermediate, that's a catalyst. This false. And finally, last two pages, speed it up a little bit here. All right, so molecularity, if one atom is hitting uni, bimolecular, two atoms, whether they're the same or not the same, or bi, three things, either the same, two of one or one of each, we have termolecular. Something past termolecular would be quat or um, something with a Q, U, but you don't necessarily generally see four. All right, so consider the reaction mechanism shown here. Fill in step one and then answering the following. So we're doing the same thing we did before. So we have four HBR, so we have two, three, so I need a fourth HBR. We have an O2, I don't have one. Um, I have an H2O, I have two BRs. All right, HOBR is gone. We have HBR, uh, we need one more, we got that. We have the O2, so we have to get rid of the HOOBR. I'll just balance the equation again. And then that makes that an intermediate. All right, so do you think it's likely that the overall reaction might also occur in a single step? And the chances, no. Why? Well, because five molecules must collide at once. So five molecules colliding at once, not a very good chance. All right, so if a catalyst were found that could increase the rate of the third step of the mechanism somehow, how would this affect the overall rate of the reaction? And it would absolutely do nothing. Why? Well, because the slow step is the one that determines the rate of the reaction. This one's already fast, so it's not affecting the rate very much. I um, mean, if you make it faster, then it's gonna affect it even less. Um, what is HOOBR? Is an intermediate? Yep, sure is. Is HOBR a catalyst? Nope, also an intermediate. Intermediate. Overall reaction is elementary. So elementary, they mean by an elementary step. So the reaction is said to be elementary if it occurs by a single collision. So um, the overall reaction is not a single collision. Like we said, it has to be five things colliding. So that's false. Step two is bimolecular. 
Step two is one, one, two, by molecular. Yes, two. And then step one is the rate determining step, and the answer yes, true, is the slow step. Consider the reaction mechanism of ozone. What's the overall reaction? So we're doing the same thing. Uh, looks like I have uh, there two, here two. Two O threes yields three O two. Good mechanism. It is balanced. What is the catalyst? Uh, you could argue that sunlight's the catalyst, but maybe you need that particular wavelength of light. What is the intermediate? There's actually two of them. O is an intermediate, used in the first or produced in the first and used in the third. NO two is also an intermediate, produced in the second, used in the third. Describe each step. So the first one is unimolecular, just O three, nothing to collide with. The second step is bimolecular, and the third one is also bimolecular. All right, so the, consider the potential energy diagram above. Write the three steps involved in the reaction mechanism along with the overall reaction, then label each as fast or slow based on the diagram. So step one, we're starting with, I'm gonna have to keep sliding up and down. So we have 2NO plus 2H2 yields N2O2 plus 2H2. The molecularity is TER. We'll come back to fast as well. Step two. So now we start with N2O2 plus 2H2 yields N2O plus H2O plus H2. And this time we're TER molecular again. And the last step is going to be N2O plus H2O plus H2 yields N2 plus 2H2O. And once again, ter molecular. So the overall reaction, we have intermediates there. All three of these are intermediates. So we get 2NO plus 2 h and it is a balanced equation. What about the relative steps in terms of speed? So once again, there are our activation energies. This one is the biggest, so that's the slowest. So step two is the slow step where the other two are gonna be fast. Answer the following questions regarding the potential energy, energy diagram again. So now we just have numbers. So step one endothermic or exothermic. So step one gets us from there to there and it is endothermic, it went up. Step two is going from 40 and ending up at 20. So 20 minus 40, this is negative 20 kilojoules. Went down, step two. Um, what is the delta H for the overall reaction going from 35 to 20? So negative 15 kilojoules. What is the potential energy of the intermediates? 40 kilojoules. If the reaction was happening in a test tube, would it feel warm or would it feel cold? Well, here are the reactions. The overall reaction is a negative delta H, which means it is exothermic. And remember, we're part of the surroundings. So exothermic means energy is being released. It's gonna feel hot to our hands or warm to our hands. Again, reasoning is we are part of the surroundings. All right, so let me know what you need.